Hi everyone, let's try that again. Welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and this is episode 168 of uh, the podcast. I can't believe we're already at that many. I'm just making sure everything's working okay. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Thank you for uh, spending the time with me and for being here. The um, the chat is very busy already. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can scroll back and like figure it all out. So thank you so much for being here. We've got a lot of people. Um, I just, yeah, thank you for being here. It is a sunny, overcast, smoky morning here. Sunny. Smoky, overcast, rainy morning here. Uh, it is Saturday. What day is it today? September 19th, 2020. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, I just want to thank everybody in the Patreon community for your time and for being here and all the things, all the things. Have you guys had a crazy week? We've had a crazy week. Not in a bad way, it's just been very steady. Um, the kids are settled back at school. They had a full five day week. It was full days. It was very, very um, intense for them. They've been out of school for seven months, right? So getting back into the routine and going to school, they're so super stinking excited, but they're also like, we're really tired. And James got up this morning, grumpy, grumpy, grumpy. And he says to us, I've been awake since 2 a.m. So I had gotten up to use the washroom at 6 a.m. and he had left the, the hall light on. And so I went and turned it off. He was fast asleep. But apparently he was up during the night. So yeah, grumpy, grumpy. So yeah, um, just looking at the chat really quickly. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, thank you, Dana. <laughs> we will be talking about this. <laughs> um, I actually have all the windows open because for the first time in almost probably 10, almost two weeks, 10 days, two weeks, um, we have rain. And um, I know the Pacific Northwest needs rain more than anything uh, because of these fires. And uh, my heart goes out to all of those of you who are just south of the border from us. Um, often British Columbia is the, where all of the fires are. And so I just, my heart just goes out to those in Washington, Oregon, and California because not only did the fire season start early this year, it's been just catastrophic. So um, I'm, re I'm thinking of you, we've been up to our eyeballs in smoke here, but having the rain, um, and actually it's been really cold because um, there's sort of like an inversion effect that happens when there's the smoke. So it's been really cold. And thankfully we can have the windows open this morning and just kind of get some air through because with the rain, even though there's still smoke, it just freshens everything up. So. Fingers crossed some of this will uh, dissipate. So, um, you guys are chatting about where you're from. You're totally, so I had said just one moment because Nora was having a tough time at the front door and um, they've gone to do a bunch of errands that Mike wanted to get done. We think my car might be le leaking oil a little bit, which is super frustrating. So um, anyways, Diane said we're entertaining ourselves <laughs> and I'm looking at the chat and I'm like, oh my goodness, you guys totally are. <laughs> So in today's show, I'm, I changed the format around a little bit. So you're gonna, we're gonna have a slightly different format to the show. I would love to hear from you whether or not that works for you or not. Um, and um, uh, we'll sort of run the credits in just a second here. There's not really a whole lot of housekeeping that's new. So everything that's sort of existing is down below in the show notes, which are linked for you at patreon.com slash Pearls. It's all down below here on YouTube. Please click the subscribe button. That just gets the show out there and gets more people seeing it. Um, book club we had yesterday, it was lovely. That's actually how I was able to finish my sweater. And we started a tin can knits along. So um, people are just kind of getting their projects together. They're just kind of figuring out which which of the tin can knits patterns they want to that they want to make. I have created a Ravelry link for you guys um, for that. And for those of you who are not on Ravelry, we will use the hashtag sweater spin um, on Slack. And if you want to access the show notes and get all of the links for books and whatnot, I have put the link in the live chat as well. So without further ado, let's, um, oh, uh, one more thing. We have, nope, we're gonna do that later. So let's get into the show. Hi everyone. 
Welcome back. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee. So I have a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to share with you this week because I have been swatching up, swatching up just a ton. I did change the music. I've changed a lot of things actually. Um, I have been busy. So new intro, um, trying some new things. I So I had mentioned this on um, a previous podcast episode that in Canada often many people feel like um, September is the beginning of the new year and then January is just kind of a continuation of this new year and it's all around our school, our school year. Anyhow, um, thank you, Erica. That's very kind. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so I've just been making some changes, trying some new things. It's all sort of the 51 yarn spin along is coming to an end at the end of uh, December for group A. Group B obviously is going to continue on, but it just means that I get to, um, Try some new stuff um, and and revamp the Patreon levels a little bit. So the tiers are all going to stay the same, but the content is going to move around a little bit. We're going to sort of hone in on a few things. So the thoughtful spinner will be a specific thing. The teaching content will be a specific thing. There will be overarching themes. So I've just been playing with it all. And it's been really nice. It's been very creative. Um, I have three things in my life that I focus on um, and everything else goes by the wayside. It's one of the ways that I get a lot done. And I'm always being, people are always saying to me, oh, you got so much done. It's like, well, actually I don't. I get a lot done on the things that are on my list of three. <laughs> so the first thing is uh, Family First. Um, this all comes from um, um, Essentialism. If you haven't read that book, I would highly recommend it. If you're struggling with um, things like be focusing on what truly matters to you, uh, figuring out what you want to do with your life. Um, what else? He talks a lot about sort of, honing in on the things in your life that are the most important. Um, you know, if you hate to cook, stop cooking. Um, stuff like that. It's not that simple. I recognize that. But um, And then Ben Bergeron of Chasing Excellence. He's the guy behind Comp Train, which is a CrossFit thing, uh, which Mike and I don't do anymore. But um, he talks a lot about focusing on two or three things and everything else in your life is sort of um, icing on the cake. So my three things are family first, a creative life and feeling connected. So if though if something that I'm choosing to do doesn't fit one of those three things, it's out. Um, it means that I'm not at work. You know, I don't. I'm not at nursing and at work full time and and doing that and giving my time to that because th that's actually not on the list. <laughs> So one of the things about um, living a creative life is I actually find all of this, like the music and putting everything together and the digital side of all of this, I really love it and I really enjoy doing it. And it's very much creates a, a, a cultivates a creativity in me. So yeah. Welcome, Deborah. Um, thank you for, for um, joining in with us. And I think Pam, this is her, one of her first live, live streams too. So welcome to Pam as well. It's so good to have uh, new people in the community jo jumping into the live stream. Everybody is super welcoming and super friendly and they will just welcome you with open arms. So please just speak up and say that you're new because you will be wrapped into the fold. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about all of my stuff because I have this huge pile of stuff sitting here. So let's just kind of work our way through it. I'm gonna move the cameras around. I have been swatching up a central. I, I, it was swapping, swatching up. It has been swatching central here. Blah, 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 um, tongue tied. So, oh, Lane, it's good to see you. Same with you, Tracy. Um, why don't we kind of just start on like the one side and we'll just like move our way across. <laughs> and um, I hope the lighting is okay. It's actually incredibly dark here. Uh, it's very dark outside and I've got all of the lights on and James, he donated a painting to us. Um, I can't really show you the whole thing because of how the cameras are, but I will take a picture and post it in the Slack channel later. James has painted for us and he wanted to contribute to our ambiance. So that is by James. <laughs> it's a it's a pansy, actually, a pansy uh, flower. So let me just move some stuff around and we will talk about my sweater after we kind of talk about all of this stuff because um, I need to stand up and we need to make some adjustments. So let's uh, talk about that and we'll do my hand spun last. Uh, so I actually have bought um, a while ago, actually, um, some 
yarn from um, Webs, and the only reason why I bought from Webs was because um, I had a credit. Because normally I don't buy yarn online, and I certainly don't buy yarn and ship it and whatnot. Anyways, I was cruising around on their website and cruising and cruising and cruising. And this is Patagonia. Look at that. Look at that focus. <laughs> Um, Patagonia Organic Merino. Yes, we have a new camera. Uh, Organic Merino. So this is uh, the sand colorway. And I've got two skeins of this that I bought. And I actually did something I never do. I never do this. I bought for a specific pattern. And I bought the exact yarn that I needed. And I bought the exact amount. Uh, actually, I bought a little bit extra. And look at me go. And um, yeah, I... I bought for a specific pattern. So we'll talk about that in a sec. So this is Patagonia um, Organic Merino. So this is, these are the two colors basically. Um, so this is the sand colorway and this is called the smoked colorway. So both very natural. Both, this is a warmer, it's not, it's more of a cream. Um, it's more of a uh, sand color. Um, this is gray, like just straight gray. I was actually looking for something a little bit more gray for the light color, and I'll show you why in just a moment, but I just couldn't find anything that was quite right, so I ended up going with these two colors, and actually I'm really happy with them. So here is my swatch, and I just realized the DSLR is um, frozen, so let me just fix that. We may not be able to fix it. There we go. Um, so these are the two here. And then I, um, uh, and then I swatch. So this is my little swatch. And you know what the funny thing is? I actually don't know. I think this is the bottom. You know, when you swatch for something and you're like, so how does the pattern go? Is it upside down or right side up? Or I'm not really sure. I think this is the bottom. So let me focus this for you guys. And um, these are the two colors and this is the stitch pattern. So can you believe this is a mosaic pattern? It, it, it just like boggles my mind that you can do this with knitting. <laughs> this is what knitting can look like. It is unbelievable. And the um, the stitches are either slipped and then to get these, to get these here, um, these V's that are like creating that V shape, you actually lift up um, a leg from the lower rows. Unbelievable. The texture is unbelievable. And you would think that this would feel really thick and really heavy. And it doesn't at all. It's beautiful. So unfortunately, my gauge is a little bit too big. So let me show you what I'm working on. I'm going to move these extra skeins out of the way. This is a pattern that I have wanted to knit since 2007. I was like, can we hearken back to 2007? Does anybody even remember what happened in 2007 after everything that's happened in 2020? Like just 2020 alone has been such a crazy year. Can we, like, is it even like, can you even remember what you were doing in 2007. I hadn't even started my master's degree. Um, I was getting married to Mike that year. I had actually, Mike and I had just gotten married. So this was on display until October of 2007. And Mike and I got married in August of that year. So yeah, crazy. So what I am making, I marked this years ago. And I'm hoping that the glare isn't too bad. And if it is, I'll just hold it um, at an angle. So this is actually what I'm making here. So it's this vest here. And this is a mosaic pattern. And it gives you that gorgeous texture. And it's funny because once you do the swatch, you can see the texture in the pattern. And unfortunately, they don't make this yarn anymore. It's sublime. Uh, merino they don't make it anymore um, but I probably wouldn't have used the yarn called for anyways uh, but and I you know I wanted somewhat of an ethically um, sourced yarn this is from Juniper Moon Farm I've heard good things I'm happy to give it a try um, yeah so this is this is my swatch here and I'll be making making this 
So it's a pattern by Joan, can't remember her last name, and very long vest. It's got three inches of ribbing on the bottom and then the three inches of ribbing in the middle to give it that waist shaping. And then um, you finish it off with um, ribbing on the armholes. And of course I dress like this all the time. Like literally, I'm not being sarcastic. I actually like dress like this all the time. <laughs> So I was when I I was flipping through old patterns. I was looking through my favorites. I was looking for some inspiration one night. I was just looking for something, you know, like you know how sometimes you just you don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what you don't know, and you're kind of in that mood where you're looking for something, and you sort of are. And so instead of cruising through new patterns on Ravelry, I decided to look at my favorites and go back to the very beginning. So I went to the very first tab on my favorites. I was once told in a yarn shop, I won't say what yarn shop and I won't say who it was um, because unfortunately this person is, well not unfortunately, this person is quite quite well known and quite famous. Um, I was in a yarn shop once, this was back in like 2010, 2011. I, James wasn't born yet, but we were. I was starting. I was getting to the end of my master's degree, and I went into a yarn shop and I was looking through my favorites to find this pattern in this yarn. And this, and the person, the yarn shop, the girl who was working, the woman who was working in the yarn shop, said to me, "Oh, can I help you?" And I said, "Well, I'm just scrolling my favorites. I can't find the pattern that I want to make." And she looked at the number. It was before the days of social distancing. <laughs> she looked at my like the number of favorites, and I think at that point I had like. 2,500 favorites or something. And she's like, you favorite too much. <laughs> I was like, what? So that happened. But now it's serving me very well because I've continued to favorite over the years. And I think I'm up to like, I have a bajillion favorites in my, in my, um, like an absolute bajillion favorites. Uh, how many favorites do I have? Now I have to check just to tell you guys. Oh, I cut, I did, I did cull. I took a whole bunch out um, that weren't available anymore. Like, you know, when you get to them and then it's like pattern is no longer available or photo is no longer available. I took all of those out. So actually all told, I, I only have 2,500 in my favorites now. So that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's lots. Anyhow. Oh, that's awesome, Katie. You just started your master's in nursing in 2007. What else were people doing? I moved around so much in a few years around that time that I don't even remember what city I was in. Oh my goodness, Kelly. Um, and I think Eve, there was a horse. She got her first dog and her first horse in 2007, so it was a really good year. Uh, Janine started eighth grade in 2007. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Becca. So she said the, the vest looks stunning. Love the ribbing at the waist for the contrast. So the really neat thing is that the pattern is actually still viewable on Ravelry. And I have it linked in the show notes. So if you go to the post on Patreon, which is public, everybody can see it. Um, it's linked there. And Joan actually has photos uh, on her project page of what the vest looked like before she submitted it to Vogue. So that was actually what made me want to knit it. This was one of those patterns where I saw it when I um, I was still coming back to knitting, just finished university, just kind of getting going with my knitting, and um, again, and not picking complicated stuff at all. And I had favorited this, set this magazine aside, because over the years I've gotten rid of all of my knitting magazines. Anyways, um, this was one of those patterns I kept coming back to again and again and again. And I was feeling a little bit, um, well, actually, I'll just lay it out. I bought this yarn on August 1st. So that was the day that my dad had died a year ago. And on August 1st, um, so August 1st, 2019, last year, my dad died. The day that he was diagnosed in July, um, so it was 10 days prior that he had been diagnosed with stage four, and um, I bought this yarn. And we were, I was standing in downtown Whitehorse, and I was uh, on the phone with my mom, and because we had, had to use satellite phones all the way up because there's so many spots in uh, BC and Yukon where there's no cell service. So we had it, we have a sat phone, and so we just pay for it when we need, need service. So we had paid for service all the way up. And so I'd been talking to my mom, you know, getting all the tests, getting everything organized. And so that day I had seen this yarn in Itty Bitty Yarn Shop in Whitehorse. 
And after I got off the phone with my mom, I said to Mike, I just need a couple minutes. I'm just gonna go for a bit of a walk. I'm just gonna clear my head a little bit. And um, I went and bought this yarn. So I did it again this year. So on my dad's anniversary, um, um, I I went on, I used my credit and I bought I bought this for this sweater. So I, I kind of I kind of like that. I kind of, you know, I might not buy yarn every year, but I like the idea of sort of um, doing something like a project or something. Um, maybe not uh, buying something every year because I don't want to get into that kind of mentality that I have to buy a sweater's quantity of yarn every year to commemorate my dad. That's not really, but some committing to some some project that has meaning. So yeah, so that's that project. So and the swatch. Um, knit up beautifully the yarn was lovely to work with it softened up it, it's soft anyways because it's merino but and it's soft spun it's kind of a tweedy um has a tweedy feel and swatching it um really was lovely because i was learning the slip stitch pattern the mosaic pattern it was a little bit challenging to kind of um, enjoy the yarn while i was swatching um i will say I didn't get gauge. So this was uh, called for in the pattern is 4.5 millimeter needles for the mosaic pattern. And I'm gonna have to go down to four millimeter needles or US size six. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> so US size six. So what I did actually, let me show you really quick. I cast this on yesterday because I had nothing to knit because I finished this and I didn't want to take the poet sweater to the park. Um, the, the kids had a, had a um, socially distancing, not really distancing play date with our other two friends who are in our, they're kind of in our bubble, kind of not in our bubble, not really sure about bubbles in terms of like if they're in it or not, um, because the two moms and I, the three of us are really, really close and I had nothing to work on. So I took this. So um, it's, it was really lovely to cast on and to sort of get going on the ribbing at the bottom and just enjoy the yarn because I hadn't been able to enjoy it when I was swatching because I was concentrating on learning the pattern. So I actually cast on, because you're supposed to work the ribbing on four millimeter needles, I actually cast the ribbing on in 3.75 millimeter needles because I didn't want to go much below four because the, the fabric will be too tight otherwise. So four mil, so I'm using 3.75 for the ribbing. I'll go up to four millimeter for the mosaic pattern and that will give me gauge. Um, this is, I think this worked out too, if my memory serves, it's like 19 and a half stitches and I need 21 or 22 stitches. And I'm actually okay, I, I feel like with a pattern like this, I'm actually okay if it's a little bit, like if the, if the gauge is a little bit bigger and a little bit looser, like if I end up with 20 stitches, because something like this, a garment like this, is so forgiving it it can i would prefer that it was bigger versus smaller this is a, one of those patterns where i certainly would not want it to be smaller um this is something where part of the appeal and why it looks great on the model um isn't just because she has no shape and she's just um straight and they've put kind of baggy clothing on her it's partially because it just hangs and it's straight um and so you to be able to sort of um do that with a garment like that that's got a lot of positive ease you want it to be bigger you certainly don't want it to be a tighter fitting garment that's really close fitting and you don't want it to be really tight through the um the upper part through the yoke um vests don't really have yokes per se but the yoke because you're going to end up with this really tight and it's gonna pull across the front. And part of what um, is appealing about this is that it sits as an oversized boxy garment. Does that make sense? So um, that was really nice to just sit there at the park yesterday. The kids were trading Pokemons because they're not allowed to do it at school, which I totally agree with. <laughs> um, and just sitting there and, and knitting away. So the other modification that I'm making, the pattern the original pattern is seamed so it's knit in pieces and it's seamed and knowing what i know and with the knowledge that i have and um, the amount that i've knit um, i cast it on as one piece and i'm going to put and i have put uh, markers on on the side seams right here so this is the one front this is the other front and then of course across the back here and then I can follow the instructions for the front, for the two fronts and the back. So, and in typical magazine fashion, 
um, the piecing is like, you know, here are all the instructions for the left front, and then the right front is work as for left front reversing shaping. So it's nice to be able to work them at the same time anyways, uh, because then you don't mess up. So how do you work out your gauge in a, oh, great question, Eve, I'll show you. That's a great question. So let me just put this away. Just get it kind of out of the way, if you will. And what I do, this is by no means the right way. I'm kind of running out of space right now. Like, it's funny. Um, sometimes I feel like I have so much space and, and I've got lots and lots of um, places to, place to work. And then recently, <clears throat> I've felt like I don't have enough space and like I don't have enough room. But then I looked around and I realized that it's because I've got lighting everywhere, I've got cameras everywhere, because um, I've been really trying to document what I'm working on. And there was something else, there was another reason that I was feeling, oh, I've got a bunch of lazy Kates out because I've been applying multiple things. So before I show you about the gauge, uh, Eve, I've been, this is my Saxony Lazy Kate, the one that comes out with my Lendrum Saxony. And you can see how much bigger the bobbins are compared to the traditional Lendrum bobbins. I can fit about 150 grams thus far on these bobbins and I've been spinning up my for my Albini cardigan which I won't talk about today just because we've got other stuff to chat about but I've been spinning up my Shetland for that and filling these bobbins and then plying and then starting again and spinning and filling them up and plying. So I've got like lazy Kates everywhere just to keep everything organized so that I know kind of if I'm coming or going. So to figure out gauge for something like this, oh, totally, Becca. Mixed feelings about your old magazine patterns. So I actually called. I, I got rid of a whole bunch of uh, magazines a few years ago now. I went through them all just over the course of a few evenings sitting in bed while the kids were, I think Nora was still breastfeeding at that point. And I started to um, just go through a few every night. Am I gonna knit? anything out of here <clears throat> and if the answer was no I wasn't going to knit anything out it went and so I ended up donating stacks stacks and stacks and stacks of knitting magazines and then I kept about probably probably two dozen I probably have somewhere between 20 and 30 magazines that are like this one that are just really special that have something in it that I have always wanted to knit that I maybe won't knit but I'll go back and look at for um, inspiration because actually this pattern sorry I think I just hit the, the, the mic um, this pattern I have to I was thinking about it yesterday at the park while I was chit chatting there goes my pen uh, while I was chit chatting with my girlfriends this pattern in the lighter color so if you were to take the light so I've chosen that sand color, but if you were to take that light color, it would look amazing in a hand spun with a sort of gradient um, because you would go from, you'd work from the bottom up and you would work through the colors as you go up or a hand spun that's gently striping. It wouldn't take away from the mosaic pattern. Uh, think about some of Andrea Maori's patterns that have that mosaic nature to them. So uh, the shifty, um, the sh um, uh, the shift cowl, the night shift, you know how the movement of that color, it would really work well in this pattern. So how do I work out gauge? So let me move this up here. It's very dark, it just started to rain again. So what I do is I lay my, um, what's this thing called? The measuring tape? Oh yes, that. The measuring tape across. And then rather than trying to count individual stitches, I actually look for this, the actual stitch, the columns of stitches. So this is one column here, this is the next column here, the next column is here, and so on all the way across. So this is um, four inches here. So this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 stitches over four inches. And like I said, I'm not super, super, super um, militant about it um, because I just feel like, you know, your, your gauge is, gonna ch is going to change. If there's too much time between when you knit your initial swatch and when you cast on your garment, your gauge is gonna change. 
I'm pretty consistent. The way I hold my yarn is pretty consistent. I'm not a tight knitter by any stretch. I don't wrap my yarn multiple times around my finger when I'm knitting. Um, and so I do more often than not, if I'm trying, if I'm actively trying to get gauge, I don't think I've ever knit a pattern where I haven't gone down in needle sizes. Where I've been trying to get gauge. Yeah, I don't think I ever have. I'm just saying something. So I'm not a tight knitter, but I'm not a super overly loose knitter. You know how sometimes you see people knitting and you're like, your needle, your, your stitches are like falling off your needles. I'm not like that. Um, okay, let's talk about swatching. So I finished my Punta. This was off of my Lendrum Saxony. This was a half pound spin. Was it half a pound? It's 454 grams. Sorry, 500 and f it's 0.5 of a pound. Yeah, yeah, it was point, it was half a pound. I was like double thinking that for a minute. So it's half pound spin. This is Punta. It's sourced in Argentina. Uh, in um, And so down in South America, they often call um, uh, Corydale uh, Punta. So this is Corydale. Um, I got it from a closing out sale at Shuttleworks in uh, Calgary years ago, 2016. And I had it in my stash all these years. And I think because I was still sort of a relatively uninformed spinner. I'd really only worked with Corydale, uh, Merino, BFL at that point in my, sp even though I'd been spinning for quite a long time, I was just spinning singles. There wasn't all of this. This didn't exist, the online community, right? This is all relatively new, having access to Instagram and Facebook and Ravelry and people who are as excited about making yarn as we are. So I thought it was something really weird and wonderful, but it was just Corydale, which was perfect for putting the Saxony through a, uh, not a trial run, but basically running it through um, and and um, getting used to it, basically. So I ran it in Scotch Tension and I did a traditional two-ply. I spun half of the, um, I, I took the fiber, it was in a bag, I divided it in half. Half of it got spun to one bobbin, half of it got spun to the other bobbin. And Bob's your uncle, it's a two-ply, it's bouncy, it's springy, it's squishy. In total, I did all of my, look at me. I normally don't do these until later. And I reskeined everything. I have all my numbers ready to go for you guys. And actually the only reason is because I'm torn about whether or not to ask Katrina if she, out of the goodness of her heart, would be willing to maybe dye this for me. Because I have 823 yards of yarn. It's a grist of 1,510 yards per pound. So I have enough to do something, a sweater with it. So I decided to swatch. So down here, so the way that I do my swatches now is I do these pearl bumps. It's one of the reasons why I'm getting better about my US sizing. Their pearl bumps are the size of the US uh, needles because it's really hard to do 4.5 millimeters or, or, or 3.75. You can do yarn overs and pearls and all these different things, but I'm finding it's easier to just do four pearl bumps for US size four, five for US size five, seven for US size seven. So look at me go with all my organization. So as you can see, this yarn, this, this, this is massive, this skein. So I'm going to have to divide this up. And you can see just the bounce and the sprawling. And of course, it was in the intro at the beginning of the show. Um, I love this yarn so much. And this is the little ball. This didn't fit on the last bobbin. So this was the little bit that was left. And I was like, oh, that's perfect because that will be my swatching yarn. So this is my swatch. So the first one is... Uh, one, two, three. This is US size four through here. And then this is US size five. And I still was getting a really nice fabric. And this is US size, I think it's six. No, it's US size seven. This is 4.5 millimeter needles up here. This is 3.75 and this is 3.5. So I, I skipped the four millimeter for two reasons. I didn't think that there would be enough difference between the 3.75 millimeter and the four millimeter. And I really wanted to see what this yarn would look like if it was pushed to the, to the extreme in terms of the knitted fabric. And I'm gonna move the cameras just for a sec so that I can show you this. Look at this. It's, it's not bad. Like for a, for a 
the top end of the fabric. The 3.75 I think is the best and then the 3.5 is really nice as well. So that's the swatch there. Isn't that amazing? And it's just two millimeters. So I've been kind of looking at patterns that um, would be, I could do sort of a shorter sleeve, maybe um, a bracelet length sleeve or maybe even a short sleeve. Nori, sorry, Norland has a couple of short sleeved um, shirts with patterning down the front that would be perfect, that have lace work that would be perfect for um, any of these gauges actually. My concern about the 4.5, because it's quite open, you can see my, my thumb through there. My concern about that gauge is that, no, sorry, that's this, this end here. You see how you can see my thumb. My concern about that is that it would pill really badly. So, and I'm not, you know, I, I would like a fabric that would really stand up. So that's the Punta. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, great yardage. You're right, Eve. Really, really good yardage. So really great grist. I actually was thinking, uh, so I when I was plying this, I plied it on my e-spinner, on my Ashford e-spinner. It was lovely. I did it during a virtual spin group. And I plied it really, really tightly. So if I can move a little bit, and I'll just focus the camera in for just a sec. Um, you see that twist angle there, like it's just got that really lovely 40, 40 to 45 degree twist angle. The thing, uh, so I lost a lot of that twist. I really, really tightly plied it when I was um, uh, plying on the e-spinner, like I really pushed it and the twist angle was not vertical, but it was getting pretty close. Um, and a lot of that twist dissipated in the water because like it hangs straight. So all that twist and it still hangs straight, which is really unbelievable. This white yarn is messing with the white balance. Um, so I was kind of thinking like I could put it back through the wheel and even tighten it up a little bit more even. Um, the only reason is so that it's like a really, really hard wearing yarn and kind of make it more like that but I don't but I think this would also be really nice really a lovely yarn for a garment or a shawl even that has some open work and some lace work and if that means going down in needle sizes to create a slightly a slightly denser um fabric like the 3.5 millimeter the US size 4 I'm willing to do that. So it just might mean uh, short sleeves instead of long. So with 800 yards, I've got I've got some playroom, but I don't want to get to. I mean, I knit my gentle morning in with 875. No, that was a thousand yards, and I cut it really close, and that was long sleeves with a collar. So I feel like I've got some playroom with this punta. How do you spell? Sorry, you've got it, uh, Dorothy. You you nailed it. You spelled her name correctly. That's absolutely how you spell it, breaking it in, yeah. Well, it's funny, Diane, because um, with a wheel like that, and we'll talk about this more um, in the future, you've got a mother of all that moves, and then I had it in Scotch Tension um, just to play around with the brake band and kind of get that going. Um, but you know, even when you're in um, double drive and whatnot, like you've got more pieces that move, and you've just got a wheel, the, the drive wheel has a certain weight to it, um, it has a certain momentum to it that's different. Yeah, it's just, um, it takes a while to kind of just get used to a wheel that's that's new to you, for, for sure. So yeah, there's that. Realized I hit stuff as I was moving around. There we go. I'm being nitpicky. Um, somebody else had a question that I didn't want to miss. Oh, that's good to know, Diana. Today is worldwide knit and is spin in public day. Challenging to do in a pandemic, but she'll manage something. That's awesome, Diana. Thank you for sharing. Um, I didn't actually know that it was spin in, spin in public day today. Um, I ripped out the patterns I wanted from my magazines and put them in a binder and added them to my RAV library. That's a great idea, Maggie. That's a great way to use space, too. Um, how did you draft the punta? So... I did uh, default, uh, continuous backwards smoothing. I think I did three or four counts. So draft, 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 
onto the wheel, draft, draft, draft. One of the things that I was playing around with actually with the um, Saxony was working right in front of me. So as you're sitting at the Saxony wheel, the, 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 the drive wheel is right here and your orifice is here. And I was working on working right here. So I was working on drafting across my body like this. So that was one of the things that I really um, uh, was focusing on. I did change out the drive band, um, Loreline. I went to a linen drive band. Um, it's just, it's a natural fiber. It's um, a little bit stickier on the wooden bobbins. I prefer it. If you would like a little bit of this to try on your wheels, just send me your address, Loreline, and I'll send that out to you. So the last thing that I was swatching today, or this week actually, was um, this. So Kelly actually sort of, she had messaged me on, on um, Ravelry, sorry, on Slack, about my CVM mohair, and I had said about um, not wanting to do the love note because the idea of holding this yarn double, I felt that it was probably going to be too dense. And I was really concerned about it and I just thought that probably that was not the right thing to do. So I just, but it really, um, it kind of sat with me and sat with me and sat with me. And so I ended up swatching it on six millimeter needles holding the yarn double just to see. I just wanted to see. So you can see that it's very airy, very gauzy. Um, you can see the six millimeter needles I can stick my finger through, but that's what you want for the love note. So this is for the, the tin can knits um, along that we're doing. And um, I, I really like this fabric. So I got gauge, it's 16 stitches over four inches and that's exactly what I got. And I washed my swatch and I, I, I've been with my swatches. What I do is I wash them as I would my sweaters. And then I just hang, I just lay them over my uh, clothes horse. So I don't, I don't block them. I don't pin them. I, and it's really the only way to get really accurate is if you treat the swatches the way that you would treat your sweaters. And so I got gauge at 16 stitches over four inches and, um, I've got, oh, and check out this grist. Okay, so this is my CVM mohair blend 8020 from Small Bird Workshop from Catherine. She's actually gonna be on Woolen Spinning Radio coming up, um, and she's lovely to chat with. I think she's coming up October 1st, so look forward to that. So for my, I had 200 grams. In the end, I actually had 219 grams because each of the 100 grams was about 110 grams. So I had 219 grams. I ended up with 1,015 yards of yarn, 1,015 yards, and a grist of 2,100 yards per pound. Yeah, so that was why I started to think about maybe I should hold the yarn double and maybe I should um, uh, try, play around with uh, the love note. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around with that and uh, this is on six millimeter needles or US size 10. And yeah, I think it'll be actually kind of nice. I think that'll be kind of a neat, I love the natural color. I'm still torn about maybe throwing it in into a really bright yellow dye and kind of coming out that like grello kind of greeny color. So I'll keep you guys posted. You guys are talking about bobbins, so let me just catch up. So. Um, do you have wooden or plastic bobbins on your magic craft? I have plastic. I actually have the ones that came with the wheel that are the camel color. And then I also have some bright, bright pink ones that I bought from somebody in Guild who had specially ordered them to match her little gem uh, that she had bought a bright pink whirl for. So I actually only have purple, or I, I only have purple. I only have plastic and then my baby uh, my core, my baby core bobbins, those are wood. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Just um, want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Wood, okay, you guys are talking about bobbins, awesome. Yeah, me too, Loreline. I'd really like to try their new bobbins as well. Um, and yeah, the stitch definition, I think, for this will be really lovely for the um, love note because it's a two ply. I was going to up ply and cable this yarn, 
but I don't really want to add much more twist. I was thinking about it last night as I, as I was knitting this, and I just don't think that adding a whole bunch more twist is going to do this yarn service because it'll just end up being really um, overspun and hard, and the, the mohair gives it strength that it doesn't need a whole bunch more twist. So holding it double gives it strength, and uh, the mohair in there gives it strength. Hopefully, um, it's enough twist to hold the mohair in there, although I'm not hard on my garments anyways. Um, Nora wants a love note as well. So I'm gonna look through my stash. I've got some gorgeous, um, soft, you see the, uh, behind me here, you see that blue right there, that blue that's in there, that that like from our, this was from our organic breed and color study. You see that gorgeous, um, bright teal, teal turquoise blue. I have a yarn in my stash that's Erin Waite um, that I could use for the love note for Nora. And so I might actually do her one as well because as soon as she saw me swatching for the pattern and she saw the lace, she immediately was like, can I have one too? And the shore cardigan went so well that I'm happy to make her one. This yarn was the yarn that I used for this sweater. So this is the Sava Bolen. This is by Jessica Gore. It is out of her, the collection Woods. This was written and published a number of years ago now, because I bought it a couple of years ago, um, 2017, which because of what 2020 has been like, that feels like forever ago. Anyways, there's several patterns in here that I had wanted to make. And again, like the Vogue knitting one, I've just been really trying to make this commitment to myself that I'm going to knit some of these patterns I've been coveting for so long that I bought that I never knit. So I've got all of our stuff in here from Tumblr Ridge still from our trip in August. So I'm just going to take that out. So I had swatched for this. I had swatched this yarn. This is Custom Woolen Mills. Um, this is um, Custom Woolen Mills. It's a two-ply CVM. They call it their four, their, their, uh, it's one of their sock blends that they do. After I swatched it for it on three millimeter needles, which is what's called for for the wool and honey by Andrea Mowry, I wasn't, I wasn't even close to getting gauge, like not even within the realm of getting gauge. So I put this aside and I kept looking and I ended up going through all of my stuff and finding all these patterns and whatnot. And, um, the gauge that I had that I had got gotten uh, was perfect for this sweater. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. I've wanted to knit this for so long. I'm just gonna knit it. I had three skeins of yarn. Each was, I don't have the label here. And I thought that I did. I thought I had left my label. I've got Punta. I left the Punta across my lap. I was like, why am I so hot? <laughs> um, I, I thought that I had, the label because I actually skeined this up yesterday yeah here it is so these skeins there's three of them they were $15 Canadian each custom woolen bills is in Carstairs Alberta and they make a few different yarns so this is called their sock yarn this is in the colorway war claw w-a-r war claw and this is what they call their super fine two ply and it's 418 meters for 112 grams. So that's the label there. See if I can get this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 70% uh, wool, 30% nylon. Sorry, this, and their, the wool is CVM. Um, that's, what, that's what they said in the yarn shop. So I had three skeins of this. I have almost the entire third skein left. Um, I thought that I would at least need more for the, for the, for the, um, sweater and what's called for for yardage is way more than what I used so what's called for was a thousand eighty and I ended up using about eight hundred so just over eight hundred yards of yarn um, <clears throat> so let me move my chair I'm attached to this, so I have to be careful how much I move. So let me, there we go. Okay, you guys can see okay? 
the elephant in the room. Oh my gosh, Diane, you're so funny. So I made the smallest size. This is the 35 inch bust. Um, I have a somewhere between a 32 and a 33 inch bust. My upper bust is about 31 inches ish. Um, so I've been knitting my stuff. Um, most of the patterns that I've been choosing, I've been trying to go for about roughly, um, at four to six inches of positive ease. So I want something that's got a lot of ease in it. And um, I followed the pattern. The pattern is awesome. It is phenomenal. If you have never knit a cabled sweater before, this is the pattern for you. Jessica does a great job explaining exactly how to work the raglan increases, the different sizing, um, putting in the patterning, it's exactly how how to, like, it's exactly what the pattern photo looks like. Let me show you. And I really like that because the thing is for people who, when you're trying to um, gain some confidence when you're choosing your knitwear, so that's how the yoke is worked and that's how the, the cables are, in, are um, introduced. And it's exactly what it looks like on my sweater. Like to me, something that works out that well, that's what, that's what you want, right? So I did knit it longer than the called for in the pattern. So I knit to, I think I knit to 16 inches. Um, the yarn softened up a huge amount in the washing. Um, I, I wish I had gone another inch in length. I, I may still rip out the ribbing and add another repeat of the cable. This is this is one repeat from here to here. I might add another repeat and then do the ribbing, but on the other hand, like it's kind of the right length. Like if I step away, like this kind of looks about right. Any longer, yeah, I don't know. It starts to look too long, doesn't it? So you've got a uh, moss stitch on the side here and then um, no shaping, just a faux seam with purling. And that starts up, up in the raglan as well. I did um, 19 inch sleeves, so I added some length in the sleeves. Plain stockinette, stockinette back, so you've got a break from all of the cabling. I thought that this was going to take forever. I thought for sure that this this sweater, um, when I cast it on on our trip, I, I felt at that time like it was going to take forever. Everything just felt really slow. And then yesterday, um, I finished the ribbing on the bottom and um, we had book club yesterday and I was just sitting there working away. I wove in all the ends. I did the, the um, neck bind off. So the neck, you pick up all of your uh, ribbing around your neck and then knit an inch and cast off. And all of a sudden it was done. I finished it in a week. I thought today would be progress. Today is finished. It's unbelievable. So yeah, um, I think this will look really nice. Yeah, it's true, Eve. She says um, it'll look nice with a, um, a layering poking out from underneath. So I think as the weather changes and it gets cooler, I think it'll be really nice to put, oh, sorry, I touched the mic, sorry about that. Um, I think to put a, a, a collared shirt underneath, you could put, I could put my vest over top. It'll look really great with a shawl over top. Uh, it's just neutral, easy to wear. Um, I, I had a long sleeve shirt under it yesterday just to try it on and see how it looked. And um, I could wear it with a long sleeve shirt underneath, which will be really nice when it starts to get, when the weather starts to change. I love how the neck fits. It just feels right. Um, just like the pink velvet, it just sits properly. Um, it sits a little bit higher in the back. It sits where it should sit in the front. It'll look nice with a necklace hanging down. Um, it won't detract from anything. It's just a great pattern. So if you are looking for your first cabled, and all of the cables are only moving two stitches. So if you can cable without a cable needle, which I can't do, or if you um, are getting comfortable um, moving stitches and doing cabling, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And every second row is a rest because you're just going around because you're not, it's not, it's not seamed. So you're working in the round the whole time. So you've got your one row of all your cabling and then you've got one row of, of just knitting and then cabling and then resting. So you've got all of these breaks and it's really easy to keep track of because in this, in the chart, 
once you kind of get the hang of it, you know when you need to do another um, cable, especially for this one here. You know when you need to cable because it's looking like, oh yeah, it's time. So it's easy to keep track of. I didn't have to carry the chart around with me. And that really sped me up because by the time I divided for the body, I kind of had the hang of it. I am glad that I did the sleeves before I continued on on the body. I needed a break from the cabling and I needed just knitting in the round. You know, I, I, I magic looped and I did both sleeves last weekend on our trip up to Logan Lake. So I knit one sleeve on the way up, one sleeve on the way back down. So then when I cast off yesterday afternoon on the ribbing at the bottom, I was done the sweater. All I had to do was the collar, which I, like I said, I did during book club. So that was wonderful. Yeah. Good to see you, Erica. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So you knit a cable jumper in a week. <laughs> Not really. I started this in August. Um, <laughs> hashtag life goals. I love you guys so much. So um, I knit from... Where did, where was I? I knit from here down in a week. So I did the body in a week. Um, I also, on Thursday evening, the cul-de-sac girls got together just in um, one of our driveways and we just sat and chit-chatted and people just needed to catch up on what was going on back to school, lots of anxiety, lots of just needing to talk it out. And so we sat and chit-chatted and I knit on it then. And then I had the trip last week to Logan Lake. So we had a few. Yeah. So that makes me not so depressed. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you guys. All right. I'm going to save the Tassar for next week. Um, and we'll talk about the Tassar next week. Uh, the, the Tassar spinning. I, I have a Tassar cocoon to show you and the peduncle. And I've got my Tassar spinning and some Tassar fiber. So maybe by next week I'll actually have it plied and I can chat to it a little bit more. This is from Sanjo Silk here in uh, Vancouver. And I have my little plyback test and it's just been wonderful. Look at that. Can we just for a minute with the autofocus? <laughs> um, the yeah, so I'll hopefully have this plied next week and I'll, I'll chat a little bit about the Tassar and what that experience was like spinning that and we'll, we'll do that for next week. So, um, a little bit of community participation. So if you're interested, uh, in, in, uh, participating in our giveaway for September, please tell us in the comments below here on Ravel, here on YouTube, uh, what is a blend that you spun that you didn't expect to be as wonderful as it was? or a blend that you're dreaming about spinning. So for me, I just started working on a new blend. This is a Massum BFL and Mohair blend. I've been doing it on my drum carter. I finished up the first 100 grams on our trip last weekend. I took the e-spinner and I sat at the campfire and I spun and spun and spun and Mike kept saying to me, he's not very good at sitting still. He's like, would you wanna go do something? Do you wanna go for a walk? Do you wanna go blah, blah, blah? Do you wanna do this? Do you wanna do that? And I was like, nope. <laughs> I am spinning. I brought my e-spinner. It was wonderful. I've got some, some, uh, lovely photos. And, um, so I've got the second 100 grams to spin and then I'm going to apply it up. So this is my sample of this blend. So tell us in here on YouTube or in the episode thread on Ravelry, and I will do a random number, give random number generator, um, giveaway. I'll include the entries here on YouTube for those who don't use Ravelry. Um, and I will include all of the entries. So if you commented last show, if you could just not comment again, or maybe just um, um, tell us about your spinning anyhow. And I'll, I'll just take some of those um, sec the second entries out. Um, I will look after that. You go ahead and comment. <laughs> um, we've got breed and color study happening right now. And uh, this is running until the end of December. And I wanted to share In's project. Um, so she is working on, she finished her spinning. So now she's wondering what she should knit with it. So she's got um, 100 grams, 317 yards, traditional three ply, approximately 17 wrap sprints. So she's got this gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely gradient um, fingering weight yarn. And I just thought, well done In. So this was the uh, photo that Greta um, submitted, uh, at the, at the warmest row. Um, Greta is a, just a, an amazing spinner and knitter. I think everybody, um, will 
agree with me. Um, I love sharing sharing her stuff as well. And uh, um, Katrina made the bats for this time round, we're, and we're saying the Char Rolet. And people so far have been really enjoying it. I think overall, you guys have there. It's been overall very positive. The uh, the responses for a lot of people, this has been new. Um, spinning the spinning the Char Rolet, and I think for the most part, it's been really super positive. So I'm really glad about that. Uh, and this is Greta's project. So at Back to Basics, Greta is local to me. She's a friend of mine. And uh, she just finished her breed and color study. She loved working with the yarn. And um, as soon as she was finished, she wanted to make with it. So this is her finished yarn. Um, she stripped down the bat as you saw in that first bobbin and then she's got these gorgeous fingerless mitts and I'm not sure if this is Greta that's modeling or maybe her daughter. So, and I love the pattern that she used. I'm sure it's a um, mosaic pattern. Mosaic knitting seems to be, are you guys noticing this too? It's kind of like popping up everywhere right now. I feel like there's a lot of patterns out there that are mosaic knitting. Um, obviously, Andrea Mowry's made it really popular. There's quite a few patterns that Sweet Georgie Yarns has put out that are um, mosaic knitting. They're just such a great way of using hand spun. So if you're having trouble using your hand spun in your patterns, definitely look up mosaic knitting um, and if you use Ravelry do go into the search box you can go into um, let me see if I can link it for you if you go to patterns um, and go to the pattern browser and advanced search and then type in mosaic knitting I wonder if I can link this let me see I'm gonna put this in the chat box um, so, 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 so many patterns come up. So I put that in the, in the live chat. There are so many, many great patterns that come up and I'm really, I'm seeing this again and again and again. The mosaic knitting option for hand spun is just an awesome way to add a little bit of texture to highlight our hand spun. So yeah, I would love to hear from others what your experience has been. Yeah, it's really gotten a boost from Andrea Maori. I think you're right, Kelly. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people, it's kind of made a, a bit of a resurgence and people are, are looking at that technique um, again. So pattern name, you missed it. Sorry, Dorothy. It's This This is the Seva Bolen by Jessica Gore. So this is, um, I should have been more clear actually because I know that people will ask. So thank you. This is the Seva Bolen designed by Jessica Gore. And it is linked below in the show notes. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And it's in the Woods uh, publication. And actually, I was wondering, maybe somebody knows and you'll beat me to it. I'm not sure if this pattern has been released individually yet or if it's only available in the book. Oh, she has released it individually. So you can, you can get it for $8 US. So I have linked that in the show notes as well. So, and it's wonderful to be able to support knitwear designers out there who are just very thoughtful about their patterns and are just doing such a great job. Um, and actually, if you guys have other knitwear designers that you find their patterns are really, um, really well written and, and um, that you've really had good results with, please, please share, especially in the hashtag sweater spin thread on Slack, because um, we're looking for sizing inclusivity. Um, we're looking for really well-written patterns and um, maybe a designer that people aren't that familiar with, um, because I know it can just get really overwhelming searching for all of this stuff on, on Ravelry and trying to find all these things. And um, you know maybe you're using Instagram or Facebook to find your stuff, or maybe you're looking on Etsy. And it just gets really hard to find um, all of the different knitwear designers out there. And there are so many talented people out there that it's really nice to be able to uh, support people. So I don't mind spending $8 US on a pattern if I know that I'm getting a great pattern. So yeah, such a great way of mixing colors without a hard edge. That's exactly it, Becca. You just nailed it. That's exactly what it is. I think that's why... That's why the mosaic knitting works so well. It's why sweaters like um, the stone crop cardigan or the stone crop pullover, it's why they work so well with our hand spun in the uh, color work because it's not this blast of color and then another color right below. You've, you've actually, you're, you're kind of interspersing the two. 
The other pattern that I thought would be great for hand spun um, to use up little bits and bobs was uh, is the throwback cardigan, which I've made. Um, it's a it it fits me okay, but the other one she's done the th there's the throwback and then there's the throw over, which is the um, uh, pullover version. And again, like you know, you've got just that little bit of color work in the yoke that you could use up a whole bunch of hand spun and scraps. So, yeah. Trisha's knit several by Caitlin Hunter. Her gauge is really loose, so don't be discouraged by needing to go down. Needle size is great patterns for hand spun. It is like pointillism. That's right, Eve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think Caitlin Hunter's having a 30% um, off sale this weekend of her patterns. I feel like Megan posted about that in the Slack channel. Um, yeah, so if anybody, if you guys have any other questions or any other thoughts as we wrap up this show, I feel like today went like that. Is Are you feeling like that too? Sometimes I feel really um, like pressured to share everything with you and I feel like I'm talking really super fast and I'm inhaling a ton of, of air into my stomach. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm talking really quickly because I'm like gasping for air sometimes as I talk because I do I do talk quickly anyways it's something that I always have to remind myself to slow down but I do feel like today's show went really fast because <laughs> all of a sudden it's 9 30. so uh thank you so much for being here and thank you for your enthusiasm thank you for um just being so active in the chat today I feel like I need to go back and as I do the timestamps to put down below, which I'm I'm woefully behind. I'm really sorry, you guys. I'll go back this week and put the timestamps in the last couple of shows. I'm gonna have to go back and look at chat because I feel like I've missed everything. I will say uh, thank you so much for um, tagging me in the chat when you have a specific question or when you're talking directly to me and not just to the chat in general. So if you guys are still in chat right now and you can see chat, um, you can see Eve uh, put at Rachel Smith and it actually like highlights me in orange and then I can see the comment. So thank you for doing that. I really, um, it really helps me to just glance over and look. I need a little like robot right here in the corner that's that's like watching the chat the whole time and can tell me <laughs> tell me if there's anything that I need to uh, address. Oh, Charlotte, that's wonderful. So lovely to knit while listening and watching. Thank you for being here. And um, goodbye to Becca. Rice cooker is beeping. I need to get a rice cooker. Um, Oh, you know what? Um, it doesn't work on my phone either, the tagging. So last weekend when we were doing the premiere, it didn't work uh, when I tried to tag. So I, it was my first time being in the chat. So last week you'll notice the episode uh, 167 is a pre-recorded episode and we did it as a premiere because we were away. And um, on my phone, I couldn't tag people. So yeah, it's something that you can only do on your laptops and on desktops, but that's okay. That's okay. It's all good. So have a wonderful weekend and have a wonderful uh, rest of your week. There is the wool stream for patrons happening this coming Friday for those who are part of that. And after this, in about 15, 20 minutes, we've got queries and explorations. And if you're interested in joining that group, please have a look on Patreon. I think we've got a spot or two, I think. I might be telling lies, but I think we've got a spot or two in queries and explorations right now. So if if that spinning group, virtual spin group, if that if that interests you, uh, please go ahead and check that out. Let me just make sure I'm not telling lies. And then you guys go and look, and it's no 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 places left. Yeah, there's a couple of spots left. So have a wonderful weekend. Have a uh, a great rest of your Saturday, and I will chat with you next week. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.